What's up, everybody? This week's episode of Skirmish Supremacy is brought to you by absolutely nobody. They're all up at Adepticon, having fun, and they left me down here in Atlanta. However, if you do get a chance to come by Gigabyte's Cafe, I will be up there every other Friday and Saturday mornings uh, running different events for different games. So if you're in the area, come by, say hi, and uh, hang out. And enjoy the episode. All right, folks, welcome back to Skirmish Supremacy. We are joined today by Mario Suhardi, the uh, owner of Mats by Mars, and one of the primary designers, a uh, all-around awesome, awesome, awesome crystal brush painter, and general nice guy that I like to pick on every once in a while. Mario, how you doing today? I'm good, man, but I think you forgot to introduce Nick. <laughs> I, I stop introducing Nick after a while. Everybody knows his ass is in the background. Nick, say something. Hi. I, I, right. I've been forgotten. It's okay. <laughs> relegated to technical support. Yes, folks, as usual, I am joined by my co-host, Nick Bogart, who's over there drinking a beer right now, which is something I can't have because of the new diet that I'm on. So that's the other reason why I'm ignoring his ass. Pretty that and much. getting to me. It tastes delicious. Yeah, yeah. So uh, anybody out there who's listening to the podcast, uh, I'm going to live vicariously through you. After this podcast is done, when we post it up on Facebook and everywhere else that we blast it out to, go ahead and tell us what kind of beer you're drinking right now. So that way I can hope to feel some form of enjoyment from all of you torturing me. Apparently I'm sick and twisted. And as, if you guys can't tell, I am uh, extremely stuffed up right now. We uh, just got hit with the uh, pollen plague down here in Atlanta. We get about, oh, I don't know, an eighth of an inch of pollen that starts coming down and raining out of the sky like green bullshit all over all the cars. And if you're not prepared for it, um, it's going to hit you pretty hard. Ever see the scenes <laughs> from Toxic Wastelands? It's worse. Oh, yeah, it's fucking terrible. So anybody that comes to the Atlanta area, don't come here between, I'd say, March and May. Anytime after that, you're fine. So, Mario, since we got you on there, and uh, we uh, are going to talk a little bit about some of your stuff coming out by Mats by Mars, why don't you go ahead and uh, give everybody a completely shameless plug about your company? <laughs> That's the part that I hate. Uh, well, Mats by Mars it, is a high-quality, waterproof, uh, scratch-proof, unless you really want to scratch it real bad with, like, metals, uh, vinyl wargaming mats that me and alex kind of develop i am the main designer for the company and slash co-owner um and alex handles all the business side mostly and the processing side um and we've been producing banners i mean banners sorry we've been producing wargaming mats for people for about a year now we just passed our anniversary mark uh in march 4th so, um, and a lot, and we focus mostly on Malifo and now Guild Ball, but we do make mats for a lot of different games. And, uh, you know, ours comes with an overlay for different games like Dead Zones. You can even do RPG, you know, the one inch grid, hexes. And we even have uh, 40K deployment zones and such. Nice, nice. So, you. How many designs do you have at the moment? I, I lost count. I actually wrote it down earlier, and I don't freaking remember. At the moment, we do have about 21 designs, I believe. This is including the space mats for X-Wing and uh, the Infinity mat. Um, but we do have a bunch that's actually in the pipeline, and we've just been busy with, with Gamma and Adepticon coming up soon because I told Alex, hey, it's Crystal Bush coming up, so I got to do my thing. Right, right. So how many how many entries are you going to have this year in the Crystal Brush? Um, hopefully, well, I got two done. Hopefully I'll have three or four. As we're talking, cool. I'm working on like an Iron Painter model right now for weird forums. Is that the Kingdom Death one you posted the other day? Yes. Feel free awesome. to... Which Pick Which the model picture was it? In. Sorry? 
Which model was that? It is uh, Kingdom Death uh, Savior, one of the first runs of the Saviors. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I thought I recognized it, but I wasn't too certain. It's been a yeah, while since I really sat down. This is probably not account. going to be my Crystal Brush entry because it's going to take up a slot for Single Fantasy. I'm going to use that for something else because they, they tighten it up so it's not two per painters now. It's I mean, two per category, it's one per category. Oh, wow. That's new. Yeah, it's it's like that since last year, I think. So you you limit it to just one per category. But you know, if you're aiming for the minor category, you can always put it in just straight to the minor category, not including in the major categories. Oh well, it goes to show you how much I paid attention last year. <laughs> <laughs> Worked for the damn company that puts on the crystal brush, and I did not pay attention to the new formats. I was too busy mm-hmm. running games. Good, because it's a separate thing from you anyway, right? So, Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> so, out of the four entries, uh, what categories are you entering in? I am trying to get into uh, Chibi, and then a Fantasy Unit, and also a Wrath of King. That, that's the one that I wanted to, for sure, I need to done by like next week uh but if i have time i, I have a wrath of king i mean a, a dead a dark age model that's sort of just been sitting there for a while oh i can think of a couple of them are they ice cast models no this one actually firecast yes oh really okay because i know that you did some stuff with ice cast a couple of years ago what was it 2014 you entered Luck Kick Kai? Yeah, yeah, I got I got the Arbiters of Fate, um, and then I also have some of the, um, what do you call it, the, the Ice Elemental, the smaller ones, I don't remember their names. The Hail King. Um, yeah, but that that's about it that I have, but I do have, like, David model and all the other stuff, it's just I haven't had time to paint him. Nice. So are you entering anything in... Actually, I don't think Malifaux has a category this year, does it? No, there's no other sponsors this year except for, you know, whatever Simon's pumping out. They're doing it differently this year, and um, the only two, you know, sponsored ones is Dark Age and uh, Breath of Kim. Kings. That's it. Wow, that's kind of kind of sad. Kind of sad that. because last year Weird had one, the year that I didn't go. Thanks, Weird. <laughs> Come on, man. You know you're still a Malifaux whore. You play that game all the time. That's like the only game you play anymore. Eh, I sort of dabble a bit, uh, on um, Guild Ball now. Well, I'd certainly hope so since you're making mats for him. That's exactly why I started playing it. I'm like, hey, I make mats for them. Why not play them? I like Guild yeah. Ball. Trying to get Tim to play Guild Ball. Uh, uh, you can't really. Well, if he plays the Butcher, he might like it. Actually, I was going to play either Butchers or the Morticians. Mainly because I wanted to paint the Morticians to look like a death metal band. I know I've said that a couple of times on the podcast, but uh, it's the only way that I can reiterate myself that there's a possibility that I might play Guild Ball at some point in the future. If you play Guild Ball, uh, man, yeah, your play style, I could see Morticians. I could totally see it. Yeah. I uh, Honestly, I don't know fuck all about that game really so i mean as far as what the different models do what the different factions do i'd be coming at it like a complete noob i would have to do some reading online to see how they play or just talk i, to people I, that are playing I don't know factions. it either per models but you know faction wise i can kind of help you give you like you know what does what like butchers obviously they like killing people and then the uh, fishermen's they like to score goals uh the masons they have higher armor um, they hit kind of hard, and they can also do goals as well, kick goals. The alchemists, they're more like AoE, kind of like, um, what do you call it? N- not just AoE, but they, they have effects that last for a while. And then the morticians is about, um, what do you call it? Constellations, like whatever you want to do. It's an annoyance. And then gotcha. the brewers are about defense and knockdowns. Who brewers? Kinda, yeah, they kind of play like the like dwarves. Boy, that's and, not shocking. Something that's yeah. a complete alcoholic class. 
or uh, faction yeah. plays like dwarves. <laughs> Hell, one of their guys has a broken beer bottle. That's his weapon. Yep. That's awesome. It is one of one of them throws beer mugs with like fire. <laughs> oh yeah, and the other one's Molotov cocktails. Yep, that's awesome. So, what else are you playing besides Guild Ball and Alipho? Been playing a lot of board games with just my local game group. Well, meaning like my wife and her friends. Just a lot of board games. So you haven't really dabbled in like Age of Sigmar or uh, tried out any Frostgrave um, or this is not a test or anything along those lines. The only time that I'm going to touch Age of Sigmar is probably just going to paint it, not play it. I've never, like you know, I've been in the hobby like what fifteen twenty years. I've never played fantasy or forty k. Which is crazy. And I mean, I'm sure I, that most I, people out there I listening would say that is crazy. That's, yeah, I that's, paint their models. That's like, that's like a miniature gamer's bread and butter, at least initially. I play Mordheim and Necromunda. That's why. Oh, makes sense. Yeah. I can't even say I play Blood Bowl because I play it on the PC. I've, I know the rules of the miniature game since forever. Just never really get to play. You're talking crazy, sir. Why? <laughs> I'm a painter, not a player. This is true. Yeah, so anybody that's out there I, I, listening, you guys can definitely find Mario stuff out online. He's He posts shit everywhere. I mean, how many different forums are you on? You're on the Cool and You're Not forums. You're on uh, Weird. You're on... Soda what is that Pop. other one that popped up? Soda Pop, and I'm also in a lot of different Facebook groups. Um, you know, that's wasn't, that, that's the only way that you can get exposure as an artist. That's true. Now, wasn't there another site out there called, like, WAMP or something like that? Yeah, WAMP. I, I used to be a little bit more active there, but I haven't been on there for, like, years. It just kind really of died down because mostly it's it's in the UK. They have really good artists there. Gotcha. Just, I'm, not, uh, I'm, not, I'm not even active in DACA. I mean, I have a really? username. That's crazy. I didn't know that. <laughs> I thought you were like everywhere. No, I not really. <laughs> That's what people thought. Yeah, so you also do a lot of commission painting as well. I used to. I haven't been. I, I've got, I think, one or two more commissions that I need to finish up. And then after that, I mean, it's still open, but, you know, some people are scared about the prices, but, you know. They get they get whatever they the quality. Well, it's kind of the same thing. People look at tattoos the same way. They want to go in and get a, a nice looking tattoo that's going to take hours upon end for fifty bucks. They don't think about how much time goes into painting miniatures like on a decent level. Yeah, that's ex- exactly what commission is. Yeah, so I mean, I, I feel your pain on that one, man. So, because you started commission painting how many years ago now? Three, four? Uh, I started back in the hobby in 2012. So, and then after that, probably about six months till I'm like, hey, you know, some people like my stuff. So maybe if you want to get me paint your stuff. But I, I started, you know, lower price before, but start winning a little bit more comp- competition and people start asking for my prices. I got very lucky because one of the one of my client set my price first, so I, I didn't set my price first. So I, I got paid one hundred fifty bucks for uh, for one model, and he gave me some tips as well. So yeah, you can't that's go wrong just with that, the, man. that's the generic um, price range. Gotcha, gotcha. <clears throat> yeah, because I know that there's a couple people in the local area here that have been looking for some commission painters just to get stuff done. And a lot of them are just busy, busy people that just simply don't have the time. Yeah, so, I don't uh, do armies, though, because uh, that would kill my soul. <laughs> so no Hello Kitty Space Marines? Uh, please don't. <laughs> if I have to hey, paint hey, the same model like 300 times. Hey, don't hate on my Hello Kitty Space Marines. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... One thing they they forget that you know, commission painter can actually reject your projects. Go, 
Come on. Yeah, that is true. Until until everything's said and done, Be good. And they make paid me you, happy. You could kind of back out at any time. Yeah, it was like, like, and I've been lucky that my clients have been giving me. You know what? Go um, ahead. Go to bed. Ample amount of time to do it. Just they, go. They, you know, it's one of those things that upfront that I tell them I like flexible deadlines, um, and. They've been giving me a pretty, pretty good amount of time to paint it. Um, and they, they don't really have art direction. Like, they give me freedom, which I really appreciate. Oh, so a lot of times they don't even come to you with, like, a color scheme or what they're trying to shoot for. They're just like, here, paint my stuff? Yeah, pretty much. Like, even, even weird, just came, like, you know, hey, we don't really have a color scheme for these and just start doing it. Like, okay. So with we so you said we are you are you doing commission painting for the company itself as well? Yeah, I I used to. I did a couple of I did the Kaladi and Nakima for them. Uh previously I did the Death Marshals that I put from my crystal brush. They actually bought that from me. Oh nice. Yeah. How long ago did all that happen? I've been out of the loop uh, with this shit for a while, so you're gonna have to fill me in. I sound stupid is- on this, but uh this is probably somewhere around 2014. Nice. Yeah, and then um, to the last year was Colodi, because this is before Colodi came out as a plastic model. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So, how, so one of the things I gotta ask because I, I keep seeing it being posted: How well is Malifaux actually doing out there in California? California, um. It's not as good as before because before we had like 300 players and then roughly about 20 to 30 per tournament. But I'm trying to build it up back up and we're in contact with a lot of the West Coast um, henchmen like Chrissy, for example. And, you know, I've, I've been getting about 18 to 20 uh, players to play. And we, we exchange players, you know, from San Diego, North Cal, NoCal, and everything else. So, yeah, That's we're good. in a network. Um, we're building it back up. So I take it the whole NorCal, SoCal, Malifaux thing is blown over now? Uh, I mean, that's what Califo is all about. But then for the past two years, the winners of Califo is not from California. <laughs> They've oh, been taking brutal. away our trophies. <laughs> So, for the folks listening out there, when uh, Malifaux actually switched over to 2.0, there was a big movement out in California that, uh, I, quite frankly, a lot of people just got pissed off and decided that uh, they were above the new game and thought that they were clearly fucking superior players or some other bullshit and didn't believe in anything weird was doing. And it kind of wrecked the scene for a little bit. Um, I think it was more of like loss of trust. It wasn't more like I don't think they think they're better than you know weird and everything it's just they didn't like the changes you know they've been invested in um, and and you know things happen for a reason and I guess the purge happened and you know they they play other games it's not like they stop playing yeah because I don't know I read some toxic toxic shit from around that time frame so I, I remember seeing a bunch of it when I was still a henchman with weird and I was just looking at it going, holy shit, what is, like, it, it's it's an addition change. It's not the end of the world. Now, if you don't want to play anymore, that's fine. But some of the stuff I was reading online was just straight vitriol. Well, some people got really invested in the game, like, and, you know, they, they didn't like the change. I mean, understandable. Their opinions, it's, I mean, you know, people can talk whatever they want. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Usually, I'm one of yeah, those. Yeah, I mean, I, I still have mad respect for them because they introduced me to an awesome game, yeah, which I still play true. and I promote now. So, yeah, how long have you been a henchman with Weird? Roughly, probably about two years, but actively as an actual henchman, like not like online henchman, probably about a year. Okay, it's, so it's, you haven't been doing it. It's it's fun, it's rewarding, it takes a lot of effort, and, you know, 
if if you think that being a henchman, a pundit, a what, a rough writer before, a what's for what's for private your press? Press ganger. Yeah, if you're press ganger and you think you're just getting free shit, mm mm That's not how things are supposed to do. Uh, not not how that's not how they're supposed to work. You you have to like spend a, a lot amount of time to actually just you know get a community going and not build a toxic community. That's the important part for anybody out there listening. If you get into any type of an organized play for any company, don't be a dick. Like don't build a toxic community. Don't. When you start a new game, don't sit there and shit all over everything else that you know people are playing around you in order to try to get new people. Because all you're going to do is just divide communities, and it sucks. I've watched yeah, it happen numerous don't times. Don't talk shit about other games because you know right. their players could be your players soon. Yeah, exactly. At least if you're going to talk shit about other games, then do it while you're not representing the company that you're supposed to be doing stuff for. Right, because you are a member of their community and if every single one of you or just one of you like that, all of us are affected. Yeah, exactly. Words of wisdom. I can be serious. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, wait. You're not allowed to be here if you're serious. (laughs) Sorry. Woo, squirrel. (laughs) (laughs) So you're actually going to Adepticon this year. I know last year you ended up missing it. Yeah, uh, I believe I you and the wife were traveling. Trip. I'm sorry, what was that? You broke up there a little bit. Because I had a big Euro trip that I had to go to, so it's a big it's a good trade off. Yeah. Because I think you and your you and the wife were out traveling around a lot last year in Europe. You yeah, guys were going we for went what? for about eighteen days with my dad and my brother and my wife as well. Uh, we try to do that at least once every two years or something like that. Awesome. So, are you excited to be heading back to Chicago and jumping Man, back into the thick I would hills? have been a lot more excited if we're actually sponsoring something. <laughs> it's it's because I know I'm I'm gonna do that one of their model no matter what you know one entry. This is yeah whatever. But I get to see my friends that you know like you, uh, Nick. Are you going? I will not be going to Adepticon. Damn it. Uh, well, yeah, I get to meet, you know, friends that I don't get to see that often, like once a year. Well, sadly, this year I'm not going to be able to go either. God damn it, Tim. Yeah, <laughs> Why I know. are you doing this? You know, you know, normally I wouldn't miss it for the world. However, uh, I, I know I mentioned it before, but, uh, you know, mother-in-law's got a bout of cancer that she's fighting through. So I, I kind of need to keep uh, all my funds freed up so that way if we need to you know be mobile and head up to wisconsin to see her or help out in any way we need to be able to do that and, and so because of that adepticon is not in the cards Best wishes not that i don't want to go like i mean last year i wanted to go but you know things got in the way so life happens yeah it does and hope you know wish for, for the best for your mother-in-law ah thanks man so you guys have been starting up a whole lot of like tournaments and new conventions out in California. What all do you guys have going out there right now? Dude, right now, this year, so we did LVO, which is in Vegas. Right. Um, and then uh, I went to Gamma, which is industry only, sadly. It's, I mean, it's great because we get to see stuff before it actually released in Gen Con. Um, and then... I have Adepticon soon, and then Kingdom Con is after that, which is April 28th at San Diego. And then Califo, June 11th, uh, KublaCon, Memorial Day weekend, Bay Area Open, I forgot when that is, but that's mostly for 40K and Fantasy and War Machine. And what else? Oh, WonderCon is also this weekend. Uh, it's not really heavily miniature, but you know, it's 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 geek stuff. It's always fun to go. Um, I'm gonna go this Sunday because tickets for Saturday and I think Friday's still open, but Saturday is already closed. Wow! Yeah, you guys yeah. have just been booming out there lately with conventions. It used to be that it was either like 
right around the Gen Con area in Indianapolis or, you know, Northeast or uh, Washington. So it was pretty much like three focal points. But you guys have really been doing a lot out in California. And I noticed that, uh, you know, even if it's not miniatures based, there's still a, a shit ton that's going on out there. Well, see, the thing is, for board games, there's always Strategicon. And Strategicon in L.A., they have three different cons. One of them is Orcon, and then there is... Oh, man, I forgot what the other two is called. But it's it's they do it three times a year. And it has a pretty good following. Um, you know, it's, it's smaller, probably about 2,000 to 4,000 people. Or no, probably at max about 2,000 people, I think, if I'm not wrong. But oh, wow. that, that's about it that I know of. Um, and I actually have mostly non-local friends like i i mean this year is a little different but last year i actually played more in sacramento than i am playing over here in la weird how'd that end up happening just everything's just going like, on in that area i just travel more to that area like i played malifa probably about three four times last year Ooh, brutal yeah but you know Everything is changing. Now that I have my own business, I have more reasons to go to cons. Yeah, that's true. You can't really have anybody telling you no on that factor now. Yeah. That's why I started a podcast. Or (laughs) joined one. (laughs) Yeah, this is my one weekly moment of, I guess, respite to where I could just sit back and I can do my normal thing where I just talk with people because otherwise I get so inundated with work and other things I'm doing that I'll just go and talk with people on Facebook and not actually have anything to do with the hobby for the most part, which sucks. (laughs) So this is my excuse world. This is my excuse. This is your release. Yes, very much so. Uh, Speaking of release, uh, I know you're working on some stuff right now. I am actually putting together a bunch of, uh, Mantic Ogres for Kings of War, and I'm doing the the two-handed weapons, and their arms do not fit at all. I'm going to have to soak every single one of these bastards and bend their arm. Yeah, at least it's, you know, with Mantic, you can easily kind of do that. Can't do that with yes. G- GW stuff. Oh, no. No, no, no. Yeah, with Mantic, I just got to hit it with a bit of heat and call it a day. It's not too terrible. Oh, come on, you bastard. I picked Nick, up what? Mantic Dwarves today. How are they? Actually, they're pretty neat. Um, though, it's really, it's actually my own, my first Mantic products, and uh, I opened the box and I looked in it and I went, what the fuck happened? It's just like, they they were going by and they're like, here's a handful and threw it in. Here's another handful, threw it in. Here's some of these. Some of those. I think that's right. You know, it just was like all in a mass pile. I was just, and then randomly, there's a bag full of, full of uh, dwarf badger riders, and they've got ba- their arms badger loose. Riders? Yeah, they got badgers, angry badgers, like pissed off badgers. They're pretty funny. Interesting. Yep, I'm guessing they're honey badgers. They don't take no shit. <laughs> You gotta paint them all as honey badgers too. If you don't, I'm gonna be pissed. Oh, Are yeah, you I, guys gonna be playing it according to the Kings of War rule, or are you trying to play like Ninth Age or Kings of War rules? The Kings of War okay. rules are actually really decent, and you know a lot of people say that they're they're not as in depth as you know Warhammer Fantasy. But Stop the, the big thing that a lot of people forget is that the rule system itself is designed to be played with a chess clock. So. Your games are timed. It's it's not just a matter of I put my 2,500 points on the table, you put your 2,500 points on the table, and we could take all the time in the world. No, we have a set amount of time, especially in, a, in an organized player tournament setting, to get through everything. So, And if I don't finish activating all my stuff, well, tough shit. I'm, I'm out of luck. I like time, game, time games because, you know, when you play in a tournament, like going against Rezzer, where... If it's unlimited time, pretty much Rezzer's going to win. 
because oh, yeah, they'll they just, just they'll keep just summoning every- more and more stuff. Yeah, that you know, was actually it, my tactic for quite a long time. It's still a viable tactic now. Yeah, that is very, very true. So have you uh, been doing any playtesting on uh, their new game that they got coming out called The Other Side? I'm not a big playtester, sadly. Uh, I mean, I got invited into it. Alex kind of invited me, and I signed the NDA, so technically I can start doing it. But I'm... Nah. I'm like I didn't even care about you know rules that are getting nerfed and stuff from the previous games because you know what just give it to me you know if that's the rule how it's supposed to be played now I'll play it that way like I don't complain about anything because to be honest I I'm not a good playtester like I won't see you know <laughs> oh my god this is broken this is this I'm like mm. and I got players that still talk to me about you know tactics and stuff and I I, I warned them. I'm not the best person to talk about this because I generally don't really care. Like I read what I can read and then that's about it. Makes sense. Ugh. Well, especially with you, cause you devote so much of your time to painting. Like the, the idea of playing the game is kind of one of those secondary things where unless it's a tournament, you're, you know, I go to probably- tournaments to support my friends events. Right. You don't go there yeah. to win or use any, high level tactics or anything of that sort. Oh, my tactic is pretty much open. Like I go on a lot of different um, podcasts to actually just pretty much tell everyone my tactics. I hope, you know, if, if they, they play against me, it's just, my concern is, are they having fun? Well, like if, if you know me, if you played against me on, on in, in tournaments, I don't really care if I win or I lose as long as I have fun and you have fun. I, I, I would care more if I get best painted. Or sportsmanship. So the w- rewards that most people don't care about in most tournaments out there. Not yeah, for nothing, but I mean... You know, I, we're pushing toy soldiers. If I'm not having fun at it, and I'm, I'm spending a lot of money for not having fun, no way. I don't even go to the cinemas watching horror movies because I think the idea is stupid. Like, why pay money to get scared? <laughs> That's and it's, it's, like it's it. not about, you know being a scaredy cat or something. It's it's just the principle of I wouldn't want to pay to get scared. I mean I can do that and sleep at home. <laughs> that, that, I mean that's, you that's do live game. in California, so you know. No, that's a joke that my wife's scary. It didn't translate well. <laughs> I didn't want to take it that route. I was actually trying to take the high road, but uh <laughs> yeah, since he put it out there, you know. So anybody listening, Mario's wife is a terrorist. There, I said it. There, it's all no, done. No, she's not. She's an awesome cook. <laughs> Paris oh, can cook. <laughs> Stop digging, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. These goddamn things. Anybody out there that's listening, if you have any idea how to put these goddamn ogres together with the two-handed weapons in an easier way, let us know because they're pissing me off. Oh, oh boy. So, head to Adepticon. Are you taking some of your new products with you? Uh, yes, <laughs> this is going to be the first time that we're... Well, not new products, but we are taking products where uh, Ken from Badger actually is gracefully letting us use some of his space to open a booth. So, this is the first time that Matt's by Mars is going to have a booth at Adepticon. Also, uh, some of the mats that are in the Malifaux room, because uh, all I think mostly all the mats in the Malifaux room is going to be our mats. Some of them are going to be on sale. So if you're still around on Sunday, and if you want to buy, you know, the slightly used mats, it's going to be thirty bucks, I believe, instead of the regular thirty-five. That's not bad. That's and not I mean, bad. by slightly used. Trust me, there's not going to be scratches unless somebody really want to scratch them. Yeah, and that's something I can actually attest to. I mean, you sent me, what is it, five mats? Yeah. And I've actually kind of put these things through the ringer. I'm not going to lie. Like, I've, I've beaten the shit out of them quite a bit. Um, I've used my prototype for over a year, and I still haven't gotten any scratches on them. Yeah, I mean, like you were saying, man, I would I would have to go out of my way 
to actually damage this thing. Like I, I would have to like take out my pocket knife or my exacto and just start running the blade across it for no apparent reason. As far as like your your day to day play, these things are fine. They hold up great. Uh, like we had one complaint before, but that person was had um, chemical solvent that was still on the resin that he tried to clean off, and he decided to play with the wet, you know, stuff. And then the next morning, he still see a puddle, and he wants to clean it off, and he just wipe it off. And obviously, you know, cleaning solvent and ink doesn't really mix. No, not at all. Word of the wise for anybody out there, don't ever do that. Yeah, you'll have a pretty ugly man after that. That cleaning solvent will strip the paint off of just about anything. Models, uh, obviously mats, your mom, I don't know. Like it, that, that stuff just rips <laughs> It rips stuff off of everything. It's, it's terrible. If you ever get resin models, make sure that you wash the shit out of them. Especially if you're getting into uh, Warzone, because everything they do is resin, and uh, it's on their very, very light. But uh, if you're not careful, that stuff will... Uh, it seeps down across the base, you don't even realize it, and uh, it could get pretty ugly pretty quick. What games are you playing nowadays, uh, Tim and Nick? Nick, I'll let you start on this one. Well, playing um, Frostgrave when I get a chance, X-Wing. But that's been about it. Collecting I've always them. wanted to try Fro- Frostgrave. Oh, it's fun. It's it's fun. Simple. You know, it's 30, 40 minutes. Because it's, it's, it's the personification of Mordheim that I've been missing. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you wouldn't be wrong on that. It's it's Mordheim in a frozen city. <laughs> Which, yeah, could happen, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. and the nice part is I've watched you know people on all the various groups, and and they've adapted it to uh, lots of different things. Uh, one guy just finished uh, Arab Grave or something like that, you know, and it's set in the desert, and he has all this awesome terrain. And just all his guys, instead of being uh, bundled up for winter, are out in the desert. Taking and running around for no reason. Pretty much. Oh, yeah, so... Yeah, I've been playing some Frostgrave. Uh, we actually started a bit of a campaign at work, and then it died off quickly. Uh, just timing at my job sometimes it just uh you know we we have the best intentions to sit down and play games all the time but with the way business has been growing it's been really tough uh obviously age of sigmar i've mentioned it a couple of times uh warzone uh yeah warzone resurrection a little bit of infinity and uh that's really about it at the moment i have i honestly have not had a chance to dive into too too many games obviously i'm putting together kings of war so that's kind of a given oh and then uh, also i'll be getting into uh, mantic's warpath and all their different levels of that in there so that's warpath warpath firefight which is kind of like the in-between of mass battle and skirmish so kind of 35 points of war machine level and then uh obviously they have uh dead zone as well which is their skirmish level that kind of ramps up to warpath Dude, if I don't know you, I think you're playing too many games. <laughs> I am. I'm not going to lie. I'm playing way too many games. <clears throat> way too much stuff on the painting table right now. I actually had to make a checklist in order to make sure that I get shit done. It's that bad right now. <laughs> so uh, my painting table moved over to my uh, gaming table. Or at least the shit to get pay- painted. And it it doesn't even all fit. I've made a four foot by eight foot table look small. First world problems. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Awesome. But I'm actually uh I'm super stoked this week. 
I just finished up. I did. Uh, I, I'm collecting U.S. Uh, Ariadna for Infinity, and I just finally started trying out airbrushing. I've got all of them base coated. Uh, there's 24 or five models. I have. I got 17 of them done in a week. I was happy. That, that's Air the most brushing. models I've like pretty much ever done. Airbrushing saves a lot of time, but learning how to airbrush, that's a different story. Yeah, no, there, there's a lot of that going on. Yeah, I got a compressor now. I just need to get a conversion hose to fit the airbrush. So, Go talk to Ken. He might be able to help you with that. Yeah, I'm going to have to because uh, I've been looking elsewhere, just, you know, heading out to game stores and whatnot, and I just haven't found it. So probably just bug Ken, see if he's got something. See, I made the mistake of uh, getting a kind of a general air compressor. It's like a two-gallon thing. So it's not even designed specifically for airbrushing. It's designed to where I can airbrush or if I need to fill up the uh, tire on my car. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can. I forgot what the website that you can get it from. But you don't have to get like a branded one because what Ken is saying is pretty much from the same company in either China or Taiwan that makes those. Oh really? Yeah, I forgot what the the website's called, um, but it's it, it looks like a generic one. But as long as you have you know the conversion pieces that you need, yeah, you're you're good to go. Awesome. Yeah, I'm going to have to look into that then because uh, I definitely need to get a, a conversion hose. Because right now I've got the, the one for the, the big coil for filling up a car tire. I don't have the big coil that fits into the small airbrush. Uh, depends on your Oops. airbrush. I think you can p- probably go to either a hardware store or you can go to Michael's and look for, like, you know, if you have Badger, then they have the Badger hoses. Yeah, I might have to do that. I And, and don't forget to use the 40% coupon. Who's selling Michaels now? <laughs> hey, man. I'm trying to save you money. Oh, I know. I appreciate it. Nick, do you know if there's a Michaels around? I haven't seen one move down here. Uh, or yeah, Hobby there's, Lobby. There's a Michaels near me, uh, up off Cobb Parkway. Really? Okay. I have to go up there and check that out then. Yeah. Um, now, Hobby Lobby's where I got my... Uh, I, I got the... Iwata Neo Pro, or uh, not Pro, just Iwata Neo, with their 40% coupon, and I think they had the adapters that you're looking for there. Okay, yeah, cool. just make you may, just make sure that you use their, their 40% off, because a lot of people don't realize that's available. I mean, even... Yeah, definitely. Even the president of Badger Airbrush tells people to use the coupons, you know? Save some money. Buy more airbrush stuff. Yeah, because that's uh, one thing that uh, I just have not got into. I have been kicking it old school this whole time and just painting every single thing by hand. Well, I've been actually going back to my roots. And I I, I just prime and I sometimes if it's like, you know, like if I'm painting orc and everything is mostly green, he's not wearing any armor, then I would use an airbrush. If not, I'll, I'll, I've been painting with him by hand. Nothing nice, wrong with so you're that. just tidying up those old skills? Yeah, man, I'm still working on blending, so... So, speaking of painting techniques, what, what do you find to be using the most lately? Because I know that you You've kind of you changed a bit over the years as far as like your your different painting techniques. Like you you've grown definitely. I've seen it, but uh, I mean we haven't really ever sat down and talked about like what techniques have you adapted to, or you know what techniques have you kind of taken and made your own. Um, one thing that I think has been improving is is blending for me and i think that's a very useful skill to have it doesn't matter what kind of blending you do you could do layering you could do you know the wet blending two brush blending i mean i'm not an expert in any of those um mostly that what i do is layering but then i do li- like i understand the concept of wet blending so i do that a little bit but for me the big thing is color like it's it's 
I don't want it to be sounding as preachy or cheesy as possible. It's go back to your basics. You know, the color wheel is there to help you. Don't underestimate the power of the color wheel. Um, a lot of the compliments that I've been getting lately, it's like, dude, you got your colors like down. Like, that's because I had the proper basic training. Like, I went to school for graphic design. So, you know, color wheel is second nature to me. Like, what color works with, with what color? That's very simple for me to do. Um, but there's online tools, you know, you can buy the color wheels, or there's all online tools like, ColorSchemeDesigners.com that can help you prepare, you know, your stuff before you actually put paint on it. And then even oh, really? the time that you're actually putting paint on, there's a bunch of different things that you have to pre- prepare. Like, you know, GI Joe, prep, uh, knowing is half the battle. That's pretty much what's happening. You need to know. You need to prepare. You need to, you know, be ready what you're doing before you actually put paint on on it so that you would and you know when you see that your own work looks better and better actually gives you the confidence to do you know more stuff yeah i could definitely see that it's a uh, that's something i honestly have for me it's always been like more of an information overload like i have all these people that are like oh yeah blend this way or you know shade this way so, like, I get hit with eight different techniques, and then I'll try them all, but I'll never, like, sit and master one. Yeah, learning too many kung fu moves in the same time happens all the time. All you got to do is just focus on one and just keep at it. Don't don't keep jumping left and right, man. That's what my recommendation. You know, I'm not a big supporter of dry brushing, but if that's what really you're good at, keep fo- focusing on that um, until you're, you're comfortable to move away from it. I mean, I was a dry brusher when I was 15. That's like the shit went to do like 15 years ago. Yeah, I mean, I think we've all kind of started there. You know, goblin green bases and such. Yeah, very much so. I mean, with I'm no intention of, of you know, DVDs. like uh, offending anyone that's still a dry brush, it is a good technique to use, but on certain things, you know, you don't dry brush everything like flat surfaces and such yeah exactly. there, there's there's Good time to actually use it yeah definitely and the other thing of it is too is like it, we've had this thing going on for a couple of years to where dry brushing was frowned upon in painting competition because you know, I, uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can achieve highlighting or blending Right, so, you know, a lot of people have kind of taken it and, I don't want to say crapped all over it, but, I mean, they kind of have. They, they just look at it and go, oh, you dry brush that, you know, and they just kind of, like, look at your work like it's shit. And it's like, well, what if that guy, or that girl in this case, you know, I just started painting, just got into miniatures. They don't know any better. Like, this is a technique they picked up online in order to, to get through their stuff to get it at least painted to get it on a table. So, you know, we show some respect on that what's, part. What's funny is most of the people that does that, like, you know, that actually laugh at, you know, dry brushing skills are not usually the painters that in the competition or the judges. It's mostly online people or people who is not in the competition that actually have that kind of comments. Like, themselves, yeah. they, they don't have anything entered. You know, you should give... A, a huge applause for these people that's actually entering the competition because they want to know how far they're, they've become, you know? They just want to try it for the first time. They don't know that. Yeah, I mean, it's just like anything else. When you when you look at something on a quote-unquote professional level, and, you know, I know painters, if it's not commissioned, like, you're not really professional, per se. Like, yeah, you can win a gold team, and yeah, you can win Crystal Brush, Yes, Crystal Brush has a $10,000 grand prize. Um, So there's a lot of different factors in there like that, but you can't live off of painting competitions. You can't make a living off of it. Um, It's always your work that you do outside of it. But, uh, you know, going back to what I was saying, is like anytime that you you step up your game and you're going in there swinging with the big boys, it doesn't matter if it's your first year and, like, you just started painting a year ago and you just learned about Color Wheel – the fact that you even had the balls to like put your miniature in against, you know, 
Jen Haley or Marika Reimer or anybody else that's like a world class painter. Jeremy Bonamont, like, you know, kudos. Because a good majority of the people out there, and usually the ones that shit all over your work, would never do it. Yeah. They, if you're too scared to actually put your stuff out, you have, you know, no rights to critique about other people's. Yeah, exactly. Because that's uh, one thing that uh, always did kind of bug me when I, it came time to, like, painting competitions for, like, local events that I've been to and things like that. You don't see a lot of it at Crystal Brush or, like, your your big-name ones, but, like, the local tournaments where they have, like, a painting competition, I, I've heard it a little bit here and there where people are taking jabs at others, and I'm like, what what the hell is the point, guys? It's Seriously. not that kind of competition, you know? It's, it's the wrong way of looking at painting competition. I've never met an artist who's in the competition in crystal brush, for example, that would not answer any of my question. And they would congratulate me. If I win, they would, they will talk to me. Even if I don't win, I was a nobody in 2013 and I'm still basically a freshman in the painting world. Like, you know, my stuff isn't that great compared to the high end painters. Um, you know, but they, they had no problem talking to me. Just, you know, don't think that, they they're not approachable and be courteous you know that's the basic rule to approaching any other human being don't be an asshole and you'll get your answers yeah pretty much <laughs> i can't say it any better than that yeah you know don't be a douchebag people will like you or people would answer your questions yeah it kind of goes back to the uh, flow chart that will wheaton put out yeah oh, not don't to be, be a dick, a dick. <laughs> That's one simple rule. Just don't be a dick. Done. Oh, uh, yeah. So you're looking forward to seeing Derek in Austin? And Sean's well, not I already saw series. Derek at Gamma. Oh, yeah. So you already you already busted your balls enough, I take it. Oh, uh, f- for sure. <laughs> Derek <laughs> being Derek. Yeah. Yeah, I know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> I've told him I mean, time I'm, and time again I'm going to get his ass on this podcast because he hates on podcasts pretty bad. I mean, I'm, I love the guy. He's a good friend, you know, but he busts balls all the time. Never fail. Yes, that is very, very true. Yeah, because I know Austin's going to be up there selling some new shit. Um, I think Mantic is going to be there. Honestly, this year with with me not going to Adepticon, I haven't paid too much attention. But uh, who? So who? Who all did that we know out of our like our group of friends? Who's all going to Adepticon this year? Uh, Chung isn't going because of his condition. Right. Um, Les is going. Uh, oh wow! Okay. Jeff, engineer Jeff isn't going. Miranda's going. Adam Loper is going. Um, Spud isn't going. Most people from the UK isn't going or aren't going. Uh, who else? Uh, I met a lot of new people. So um, Sarge is going. I'm going to ro- be rooming with Sarge. Nice. Are uh, Andrew and his son going? Uh, family of Gamers? Yeah. I am not entirely sure. I haven't spoken in a long time. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah, because yeah, I know they were there last year. They were, they did pretty much everything Mantic, so... Mm, they were I going saw some pictures, hard. yeah. And then uh, I know that uh, Trina Hollick, Bill and Sue, they'll be there. With, oh, yeah, because uh, they're local. Yeah, it pff, takes them, what, an hour to get there? Yeah, it only takes them an hour to get there, so they're probably going to be there. Yeah, and then I know a bunch of local guys from Milwaukee that'll be up there. I think there's a couple people from the Atlanta area that are heading up, but uh, I can't confirm or deny that. Um, I, I know that it, the idea has been tossed around, but whether or not they're actually going to go, you know, is another thing. I know but, Curtis uh, is going with, um, but as I believe, as himself, not as part of Weird. So he's gonna going to be entering some stuff. Looking forward to see his stuff. Who's going there? Curtis. Oh, really? Yeah, Curtis, Curtis is going. Well, Liz and Jonathan is going, I think. Yeah, I knew they were going. I don't count them as the common local people. I mean, their job is professional commission painter and 
professional videographer. They're kind of in the industry. So. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I see them as con friends that I see only once a year. True. Yeah, you're not heading to Gen Con or anything like that this year, are you? No, for me, Gen Con is, I know, like, I want to go, like, once in my lifetime. But, you know, Gen Con, if I go to Gen Con, I'd have the money for the flight and the trip, but I won't have money to shop. So I'd rather shop from home. Makes sense. Yeah, I totally get that. I know that Gen Con every year seems to be... It's growing and growing, but uh, it, it's starting to price certain people out. Yeah, it costs a lot to go. Like, a lot, a oh. lot. Yeah, like well, there's I, no way I, mean, I can afford it. Is it oh, shit, what are the rooms going for downtown right now? Or, you can't even get into them anymore, but... Yeah, they're they're two three hundred per night. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's it's something kind of weird. You're like two blocks away from the convention center, and uh, yeah, I mean, you if you were paying for the room one hundred percent by yourself, it would cost you minimum twelve to fifteen hundred dollars in order to get everything done. Uh huh. That's insane. Nick, what the hell are you working on? You've been quiet over there for a while. Um, I, actually, I've just been sitting here listening. Um, uh, <laughs> drinking his beer. Bastard. I was drinking my beer. That was delicious. And that, and I've been on the uh, Facebook page. Just um, I went and liked Matt's by Mars and a bunch of our other guests that we've had. Nice. A- as skirmish supremacy. Any listeners who aren't on uh, the page, yeah, you need to be. Facebook, Skirmish Supremacy, go post your pictures of your beer. I posted yeah, please mine. do, just so I can hate myself even more for uh, going on this diet. <laughs> I think I've drank more beer since he went on his diet than I normally do. <laughs> He's doing it just strictly out of spite. Moral support. Yeah, we'll call it that, Dick. See, the beer <laughs> isn't there. We're taking care of it. You don't have to. You can focus on your diet and eating your pizza that's not pizza. It's made out of cauliflower. <laughs> not made out of cauliflower, damn it. Uh, well, flaxseed, whatever the hell. <laughs> So, yeah, for anybody out there listening, since uh, Nick's going to bring it up, I actually just recently went on a ketogenic diet. Um, Very low carb, um, kind of moderate fat, uh, moderate protein. Uh, Just trying something a little bit different. I figured I'd give it a couple of months to see how it works. Um, I've heard a lot of good things, a lot of health benefits, so I've been giving it a try. The only thing that is is that means that there's no bread, no pasta, no milk, no beer, um, no sugar. So dessert is a thing of the past. Um, having anything sweet is a thing of the past. Um, yeah, it's just, it, it's kind of crazy. Ugh. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry about that. So Mario, how much stuff do you have to get done before you head off to Adepticon? Like, talk us through a little bit of your prep. Because, I mean, you're not just going as yourself. You're going as Matt's by Mars. Um, you know, I know you're kind of uh, going repping the WGC like normal, but how much stuff well, do you still have to get done? For mostly now, it's just for personal stuff because for Adepticon, Alex is handling all the production. I mean, we just talked about how many that we want to bring and everything. I've already designed whatever we need, all the banners that we need for the background and everything. Uh, now I'm just finishing up my paint. I got what one or two more models, and then my tournament tray for Guild Ball. I'm not even going to be in any tournament except for Arcadia Quest. Um, I just need to paint it black, and that's about it. Uh, just concentrate on my my entries. That's about it. So, but nice. that's I mean, prior to this, two three months before this, that's that's a lot of preparation. I got to finish my models. I got to do, you know, we had gamma in the way, and and you know, um, it's it's a lot of preparation. It's you it takes a lot of dedication to actually compete and own a business and do all the hobby at the same time. I was going to say, I don't know how you fit anything else in there, but you managed to do it pretty damn well. I'm trying, man. Trying. 
Well, I know that you actually got to get going. I know that uh, the better half just got home, and I know she's probably going to be cooking you some delicious, delicious dinner. So, yeah, we can definitely yeah. cut this thing. Cool. Well, is there anything else you want to get saying before you get going? Uh, are you running any Adepticon specials for any of the listeners that are going? I don't have any of the details yet, um, and but we are going to have a booth over at Adepticon. So if you are around Adepticon, say hi. You know, we're by the Badger booth and the WGC booth, and I believe the Brush for Hire booth at the same time. Awesome. So you awesome. get a whole line of just all my good friends. Definitely go check <laughs> it out. If you're at Adepticon, just take your wallet and just drop it off at that line, and then just let uh, – <laughs> trust me, let them have their way with it. They'll be just fine. You'll be happy in the end. Exactly. <laughs> Your wife might not right. be, or significant other, but you will be. Until they kill you. All right, Possibly man, so violently. shameless plug time. What's the, uh, what's the uh, website address where they can get a hold of your mats and look at some, some of the stuff? Matsbymars.com, and if you try to communicate with us, go on our Facebook, Mats by, uh, Facebook slash Mats by Mars, or... You can go on Twitter at Mass by Mars or look for me, Mario. Uh, I'm probably in a lot of different groups of Facebook. You've probably seen my name somewhere. Just talk to me there. Um, Alex is not too vocal on social media, so I'm the social media guy. Yeah. Um, you know, but to be the easiest way, just go massbymars.com. We have, you know, contact us from there. Awesome. Cool, man. Well, I definitely appreciate you coming on. Hopefully, we can get you on here again. After no, you're thanks for having stressing me, out a little bit about stuff. Yeah, thanks for having me. Really pleasure to be here. Cool, man. We'll see you later. Thanks cool. for coming. Thank you. Bye. Have a good one.